Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review and put this to use. This is the Foxwell NT201 CAN OBD2 and EOBD code reader. Um, you know, the, the purpose of this thing is to be able to hook up to the onboard diagnostic system in your vehicle um, and figure out why your check engine light is on or what might be going on with your vehicle. It kind of gives you some um, um, different information that we're going to go through as we review this. Um, I got this off Amazon after tax and everything. It was under $40. Um, it's a good buy. It looked like a good unit. It had a lot of good reviews. Uh, so I wanted to uh, get a hold of it and give it a try. So OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics. All cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the U.S. were required to have this port in the vehicle. So any vehicles that are 1996 or newer, you will most likely have the port on the driver's side underneath the dash. If your car or light truck was sold outside of the U.S., it's still possible you have this in your vehicle. Just take a look around to confirm for sure. Um, before we take this thing out, let's go ahead and just take a look at the packaging here. Here's the unit. Um, look on the back here. It's got features and benefits. Um, you know, some of the highlights uh, tells you what it works with, um, tells you it determines why the check engine light mill, with it, which stands for uh, malfunction indicator lamp, is on. Reads codes, clears codes, turns off check engine light, um, all sorts of stuff on here. Um, comes with a USB cable, um, so you can hook this up to your computer. Um, it does say lifetime free software and firmware updates uh, with the included USB cable. So, okay, um, let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at it and we'll get it hooked up to the car from there. Okay, so this has that clamshell style packaging. Here's our USB cable. We'll set that to the side for now. Um, see if there's some instructions in here. There sure is. All right, guys, here is the user's guide for the unit. Make sure that you read through this in its entirety before you use the unit. It has all of the information you're going to need to be able to use this um, properly and safely. Um, it's going to have all the warranty contact information in it. Well worth the read before you ever use this unit. Okay. Um, we also have like a... Oh, uh, this is kind of like a flyer of all their different products and stuff that they included in there as well. And the star of the show, uh, the unit itself here. You know, it's got a spiral kind of cord, as most of them that I've seen do. Okay, so yeah, we got an up and a down. Uh, we got an escape. We got an enter. We got the I am readiness button. And then we got three different uh, indication lights over there. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, here it is. Nice little unit. Um, you know, fits in the palm of your hand. Um, you know, easy to store away when you're not using it. So, yeah. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this hooked up to my vehicle and let's see what's going on with it. All right, guys, on my vehicle, the OBD2 port is right down here on the driver's side. Um, you can see here too, um, it has an angle from the bottom of it to the top. So the connector from the OB2 reader can only plug in one way. So make sure that when you do plug it in, you plug it in the right way. All right, let me go ahead and get mine plugged in and we will take a look at it. All right, guys, so here it is um, all hooked up. We can use our up and down arrows to go through the five different options we have there. We have onboard diagnostics, uh, diagnostic trouble code lookup. Um, we got the review menu here uh, where if you save data files, this will take you into the review menu. Um, you got an about, which just tells you about this unit here, and then setup. Um, and if we're going to setup, you can change the language, unit of measure, uh, configure monitors. You can turn off the key, you know the key beep set here, uh, diagnostic beep set. You can self test the tool. You can go into update mode. Um, lots of different things there. So that's back out. Um, let's head back to our main one, our OBD2 EOBD. We're going to hit enter. 
Um, this is linking to the vehicle. We do have our ignition on uh, turned on, uh, so this can communicate with the vehicle. Hopefully it doesn't take too long here. And that little red light turned on. Let us know that the mill status, the malfunction indicator lamp is on, which we know. Oh, we jump right into this. Erase previously stored data to save data from this test. Let's go ahead and hit enter for yes. And it's doing some communicating. So we can go right into read codes. We can go into store code. The difference between store codes and pending codes, pending, pending codes are ones that haven't triggered yet, but the computer is tracking, so it's a possibility that they will trigger. The stored codes are ones that have triggered the, the mill lamp. So let's go into stored codes. And we got a P0118, which is the engine coolant temperature sensor one circuit high. And we got the P0420, catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one. You know, obviously those aren't like descriptive in the sense that they're going to tell you what to go look at and try to fix. Um, but the codes in themselves are important because we can head to the internet and do some research on these codes and figure out what the most likely fixes are and determine if we want to fix it. Um, or if we want to take it to a mechanic to have fixed. So we're going to go ahead and escape out of here for now. We can erase codes. Um, you know, after we fix the stuff, we can erase them to see if they come back on. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the codes will just turn off by themselves after you fix fix the problem, but you do have this option. Live data, if you want to see um, like the data that's going on with your car. Views, view freeze frame. So if we go into here, this is going to give us all the info um, when the malfunction indicator lamp was triggered. Um, you know, at that time. So this tells you about all the different metrics um, along all these things here. Um, you know, it might help you in your research process to figure out what could be causing the issue. All right, guys, so we got the I am readiness test, which we'll access from the main menu by that button, and we'll check it out. We got the O2 monitor test. Um, this is not supported on all vehicles. We got the onboard monitor test, uh, which they recommend performing after you've fixed uh, the problem or erased the diagnostic trouble codes. Um, a component test, um, which when we go into this... Um, you got an evap leak test. Let's escape out here. Vehicle information, which would tell you information about your vehicle, VIN number, that type of stuff. Which modules are present in your onboard diagnostic system. And then unit of measure, which you got English or metric. So we're going to back all the way out here. All right, guys, so we got the I am readiness button here. We're going to hit that. Um, it's going to, you know, relink to the vehicle here. And what this does is it tells us uh, if our monitors are ready to be tested, um, you know, if which monitors are present, present on the onboard diagnostic system and which ones aren't. It'll tell us if we have the uh, malfunction indicator lamp on or off. So this just gives a lot of useful information and if your car is ready to be tested uh, and get your emission system tested. So the red light came on again, you know, which lets us know that there are two diagnostic trouble codes. The mill lamp is on. Um, and then it tells you which monitors uh, are present in this system and which ones are not, like the ones with the, the red circle with the line through it are not present um, on this vehicle system. So yeah, that's a nice little feature too. So let's back all the way out to the main menu here. This is what I'd tell you about this unit. I like it. The price is right. It's handheld. Um, it's easy to put in a toolbox. It does what you know what you really need these to do, which is uh, get the diagnostic trouble codes. Um, you know, from there, um, you can hit the internet and kind of see what might be the issue, and if it's something you want to try to fix yourself, or if it's something that 
um, you know, you think you want to take to a me mechanic to fix, but either way, it gives you an idea of what's going on with your vehicle. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I hope you like this video, um, and let me know what you think in the comments. Have a good one, guys. See you in the next video.